Yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. All right, so this is the first of our uh, indie talks um, at the Congress this year, and we're really excited to have John because I think that their platform is super interesting. Uh, obviously, there's a connection to hotels as well, but it's also part of health and wellness and technology, so really fantastic. Um, John, let's start by just, and, and eventually, when John and I were talking on the phone, we, you actually brought up something that I thought was, like, sort of blew my mind a little bit, and I thought it was super interesting, and we're going to get to that for, like, the second half, but I want to just sort of talk a little bit more generally about Peloton, where you are. I mean, I think a lot of people probably already know what you're doing, but let's assume that they don't for a moment, and just sort of give us the background of the platform you have in health and wellness, technology, sort of media, broadcast, I don't know, sure, like all, all the stuff. Not sort of media, media. It is sure. media. you got a full television studio, I think, right? So I'm going to uh, put an idea out there, and you guys can hold me to task. But I, I think that Peloton is the most vertically integrated company in the world. And that sounds ridiculous, and it sounds like hyperbole, so I want you to challenge me on this. But we make uh, tablet computers. We make stationary bikes right now is our first piece of fitness equipment. We're coming out with more. But uh, right now, it's a stationary bike, tablet computers, bigger and in some ways better than Apple makes. We write client-side software. We write cloud software. We stream our own media, to your point, Andrew, where we stream 12 hours of live television content around the world every day. We have 7,000 classes on demand, every style of ride you would ever want. So it's like the Netflix of fitness, in a sense. We also exclusively sell through our own platform, so our own stores. Right now, we have 25. By next year, we all have 50 stores nationwide. And weirdly, we are now a logistics company where we deliver our own bikes to major metropolitan areas. Our Peloton uh, Sprinter vans will come with Peloton employees to set the bike up in your home. So we are hardware, software, media, retail, and logistics. And to my knowledge, there's no other you know, consumer products companies that do all of that. Um, to your point, especially the media, you think about all the companies we benchmark ourselves against, GoPro, Nest, Fitbit, Apple, Tesla, Sonos, all these uh, um, hardware software platforms, consumer branded, next generation you know, disruptive companies, none of them are also media companies and very few of them do logistics as well. So it's a very weird platform, hoping you've heard about it, called Peloton. It's awesome, I love it. Uh, so, so we do this, uh, I figured I would wait to ask you this in front of everybody so that I, I create the most amount of uh, embarrassment and, and uh, make it almost impossible for you to, to wiggle out of this. But, you know, we're doing this awesome auction out there. Any chance you, you guys want to donate a, a, a oh bike? What do you think? Well, yeah, we can talk about that, absolutely. All right, right on. That's it's, what I'm we, it's weird. I, I will tell you, um, we get requests probably 10 a day. It, is, it feels like the perfect uh, thing to auction for any charity or any school or any like the perfect thing so everyone who knows anyone at peloton is like hey we're having some auction can you donate a peloton bike well that's good because the, all these guys now and they all know you now yeah, exactly so it's all it's fantastic yeah. thank you so so let's talk just a little bit more uh generally quickly about uh how you're connected to the hotel space i know you're doing sure. something with weston that's right and you've also gotten you've gotten some actual results from that partnership with weston so i'd love to hear what are you doing with them are you doing it with any? Are you planning on doing it with anybody else? And what are the results of uh, of this? I don't know if it's a test case or just the rollout with yeah, them. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a new division for us, which is our commercial division. Um, so we sell to consumers and homes, and you buy one for your for your um, for your home, and you and your spouse ride it. Um, the deal is then you go on a business trip to Boston or St. Louis, and you still want that great immersive, fun, uh, motivating. 10 out of 10 workout instructor led group fitness experience on the Peloton bike and you go to you know one of your hotels or a, a, a bigger box hotel and you have fitness equipment of yesteryear it is you go to the treadmill and the dots are rotating around the track like circa 1979 um, that stuff is still you know what fitness equipment is so um, to your point Andrew uh, we uh, partnered with West End as a six-month exclusive which is now um, coming off so we have new hotel partners hopefully some of you in the coming months but uh, we basically listen to our consumers we have uh, close to 500,000 people that are 
effectively addicted to Peloton and love the experience and ride on average 10 times a month. And when they go on their business trip or their personal trip to a new town and hopefully stay in one of your locations, um, they still want to access fantastic fitness. They don't want to go back to this uh, fitness equipment or the spin bike or the stationary bike of yesteryear where you try to motivate yourself or you're watching TV. You want that immersive, fun, motivating class. So we partnered with West End. Uh, I think we're in over 50 West End locations. We're in over 100 uh, other locations, so boutique hotels like your own. Um, and I think particularly one of the reasons why I was excited that you guys um, uh, offered to have me here is that it feels like uh, some of your locations, even more than uh, the bigger hotels, are, are perfect for Peloton because you might have a smaller space and you need um, better, you know, uh, better fitness equipment that brings a whole experience. You're not offering spin classes in your hotels, I wouldn't guess. So what Peloton offers, you have one or two bikes and the, um, one of your uh, customers can come and take that spin class when they want it any time of the day with their headphones on and have a 45 minute class without you guys having to hire the instructor and that's kind of one of the beauties of Peloton. That's awesome, but wait a second, I have to ask you something. You just said you were excited to come because like of all these independent hotels, but you told me on the phone you were excited to come because I had invited you. <laughs> that you were coming to meet me. It was me. for you, Andrew, I'm sorry. It was me, okay, that's good. Right. Just so we're clear, I, I want to talk about that. So, so um, Tatiana Swedek, who's our, our chief millennial officer, is here somewhere, is a lot of the brains behind the Indie Congress, um, sort of uh, had this, this concept that, uh, so this is not my idea, it's hers. I want to give full credit. Um, it, it, that's, um, that it's not her concept, but she came up with sort of the, the connection to what John and I had spoken about on the phone, which is uh, called collective effervescence. It's a sociological concept by Emile Durkheim. And the idea that a society at times can come together and simultaneously communicate the same thought or participate in the same sacred action. And you're saying, why the hell am I, are, am I bringing this up when we're talking to John about Peloton, which is, uh, well, a company that does a whole lot of stuff, but at its focus is fitness. And how is fitness related to sacred action? Well, your thoughts on how Peloton is actually serving a need, and, and not only Peloton, but, but uh, fitness or these kind of uh, intensive uh, clubs, whatever they're focused on, how is that connecting to society, and why do, you, why do you think that that's important? Because I thought that that was just a super interesting idea and, and, and connected to religion, et cetera. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm a, I've been in New York City for 15 years, and I've been studying why people get so excited about Soul Cycle and Flywheel and Barry's Boot Camp and all these things. You, uh, if some of you are as old as I am, growing up in the 70s and 80s, you used to wear a cross or the Star of David, and you went to your synagogue or your church, and it was a very, we were a God fearing nation in the 70s. There are graphs that you can see um, that uh, in 1975, 70% of Americans consider themselves very religious. 2015, 40 years later, that's down to 40% of Americans consider themselves very religious. So a massive slide in the association with organized religion that has happened in our lifetimes. And the reason why I bring it up, and I was talking to Andrew about it, is I think that people still want the association and the congregation and the community and the ceremony and the ritual and the reflection and the music and the, the stuff that happened at church and the organization and that whole community thing was beautiful. And I think people want that in their lives, but they're getting it less through organized religion. And so what I've noticed through this boutique instructor-led group fitness movement is that people are replacing what used to be that Sunday morning 45 minutes at church with Sunday morning 45 minutes of Soul Cycle class. Soul Cycle class has candles on the altar and somebody speaking to you from a pulpit for 45 minutes and touching you and ceremoniously over music, having you reflect on your week and challenging you and motivating you and inspiring you in a way that the parallels are undeniable from what I, from what I can tell. So to, to Andrew's point with Peloton, we said, wow, can we bring that great instructor, that you know, North Star, that in some ways psychotherapist, in some ways um, you know, uh, priest, in some ways uh, somebody who's touching your life and helping you organize and think about your life in a, in a moment in time where you get away from your kids, you get away from your job, you, you put your headphones on and you're there in this music-driven community for 45 minutes, once or twice or three times a week, 
Um, so I think this whole boutique and structure-led fitness movement is benefiting from what has been a shift away from religion, for better or worse, in the world. And I think the, the shift away from religion has been precipitated by the uh, access to information and the internet. You know, when, when we were growing up in the 70s and 80s, your phone rang once a month and it was your grandma. Today, you're getting thousands of pieces of information from all around the world via the internet on your phone or in your computer. And this, this the world is, you know, uh, Thomas Friedman says the world is flat. The internet has really uh, exposed us to everything going on and changed the way we think about the world in just our lifetimes. And I think there's all kinds of social things taking place religion, fitness, information, education, but I, I'm a student of it, I think it's fascinating. I, I think it's very, so it, it's, uh, do you feel like it's an, as, as uh, organized religion is sort of declining or participation in organized religion may be declining, particularly in the United States, I don't know about other countries, sure. but as it declines, people still have this need or want to belong to some special kind of a group and, Absolutely. and connect to other like-minded folks? Is that? I, I, I was uh, um, here earlier when the woman from uh, uh, Zwift. Uh, Skift. Skift. Yes. Um, I know that's a big publication in your world. Yep. Um, but she was talking about how one of the big things that you guys are pioneering and, and, and bringing to your communities is this culture and community hub that is an important foundation. She was saying culture was one, the, the number one most important thing in this boutique um, uh, hotel movement. And uh, I think it's the same thing with fitness. It is community matters. People, ca uh, people still care about where uh, human beings are a gregarious, you know, uh, uh, entity, per uh, um, animal. Yep. And um, I think that community really is the linchpin for a lot of the stuff that you're seeing, the association. And wow, you share that too. And let's go to that hotel and let's, you know, when you go to a, a Hilton or a Hyatt, um, you don't feel a, a, a connection with the other people there. I would guess, just like this beautiful uh, hotel we're in today, you uh, are in these places and you share a, wow, I, I feel cool for being here. I, I want to be with these other people. I think they're cool. And it brings you together in some real weird human way that I think is special and powerful and probably one of the big drivers of, of what you guys are doing. It's certainly a driver for, for us in the fitness category. Really interesting. So um, let's talk about um, for a second. You got you know we're up until now you've done. We'll get back to sort of a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of your business. You, you know you you have these uh, bikes that you do and and the fitness class instructors on them. Uh, um, you had mentioned a little bit that you may be expanding beyond that into getting into other forms of fitness or other machines you might be sure. tinkering with in your. Crazy yeah. laboratory. What do you? What do you? Uh, what are you guys coming up with? So we um, we don't want to be a stationary bike company. Right now we have a stationary bike. We offer yoga via an iPad app. We want to be a disruptive company at the nexus of fitness, technology, and media. We recently um, our last round was led by Wellington Fidelity, Kleiner Perkins. So Mary Meeker, if you know her, joined our board as an observer. Uh, but interestingly, NBC Universal just invested in Peloton, kind of saying that we are the future of interactive media. So we, um, we definitely aren't stopping at the bike. We are working on some other pieces of fitness equipment that we're not announcing today, but you can, get, you can guess what they are. Uh, but we want to uh, basically, um, just like we would listen to our customers in bringing uh, Peloton bikes into hotels because they wanted them, our, our community wanted them when they traveled. So we said, does any hotel want these bikes? And, and a bunch of people raised their hands. Um, similarly, we're listening to our customers and saying, we're not just bikers, we want to do these other forms of fitness. Um, and we know that there are several other obvious things that you could bring an instructor to and a community to and competition and motivation and entertainment and all these other things that we, we stream to you through the Peloton platform onto different pieces of fitness equipment. So yeah, we're, we're pushing in that direction. Love it. So, and you say, and I'm all, I, 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 love, uh, I love hearing about and sort of witnessing disruption and how, how quickly things are changing. And we've been talking about, it, uh, we were talking about it at breakfast this morning and some at dinner last night about, uh, you know, taxis and how they were too slow to sort of, they're sort of like the dinosaurs of uh, transportation, too slow to evolve. And all of a sudden Uber and Lyft came along and now they're heading the way of dinosaurs. Um, you know, who... Who else do you, I mean, other than, you know, obviously there's fitness that's out there and there are lots of ways of getting your fitness. Um, I, I'm a martial arts guy. I don't like 
machines, but there are a lot of people who love the machines. And then there are like people who say, I don't want to ride in a studio, I want to get out on the road. And I want to you know, ride with my group of friends and so forth. Who else are you, what areas are you really disrupting and do you think are going to change because of what you're doing now? Well, I would say uh, eventually, in the not too distant future, we're going to um, really hurt traditional gyms. Um, I wouldn't say that you guys, if I asked you guys, do you want to be a member of a gym? I don't know whether your hands would go up. I think you want to be fit. I think you want to get your heart rate up five times a week. I think you want to feel good. I think you want to have the endorphins that fitness gives you. I think you want to feel good about yourself. I think you want to have energy through the day. I don't think having a gym membership is what you want. I think you want what, what that uh, access provides you. So if Peloton can give you better fitness equipment, better software, better instructors, better motivation, better community at a better location at a better value, I don't think you're gonna travel and pay more for inferior fitness equipment with somebody else's sweat on it at the gym. So we plan to do that in a very, very disruptive way. There are 55 million Americans with gym memberships. Um, that is, um, Peloton was rated the best cardio machine on the planet last year. So today, 55 million Americans are paying hard money month after month to access inferior fitness equipment because the Peloton bike isn't in your gym. So it's a weird thing. We, we plan to be um, you know, pretty disruptive. I will tell you, when you think about uh, what you guys are doing, and you see this, it, it's kind of a world with crea uh, destructive, Schumpeter's creative destruction and capitalism, but it's innovate or die. And you're seeing it first certainly in my category, technology. If you're not trying to out-innovate uh, Apple and Amazon and Google, you're going to be roadkill. I have to be crazy aggressive to get there. You guys are seeing the same thing with the, with the Airbnbs and the, um, all the different models that are coming into your category and, and um, uh, consolidation. Um, a buddy of mine, uh, Amar Lalvani, one of my best friends, runs the Standard Hotels. And uh, he's um, studied with Andre Balaz the, and, and kind of um, was an early pioneer, as you guys know, in, in some of this boutique stuff. But uh, what he told me is the old world model was, um, you know, a, a Hilton, for instance, or a, a, um, a Holiday Inn would um, redo their hotels every 10 years. They had this capital, CapEx thing where they'd put in a new system and new aesthetic and then ten, they'd ride it for 10 years and then it would be worn out and then they'd do it again after 10 years. He was saying at the standard every, basically every 90 days, Andre Balaz and Amar are re-breathing uh, life into the, the standard hotels and new things, new elements, new aesthetics, new programs, new things. And I know that that's part of your world and it's a beautiful part and I, and I applaud it. Uh, this is my first time to this hotel. I'm like, wow, this is gorgeous. This is, you know, um, really cool innovation taking place in all sorts of small ways. But you guys know that it's, it's innovate or die in your category as well. I mean, um, it's not quite technology cycles with Moore's Law where every 18 months things are being destroyed. But I think you guys are feeling the heat to really bring your A-games. And you guys are, for the most part, leading that effort of innovation in, in, ho in hospitality, which is, which is awesome. I guess I'd say finally, as we end up here, um, if you guys are the leader in your space, is there anybody chasing you? Is there, is there any pressure coming up? I mean, because eventually there will be if there's not right now, I know. For sure. Um, uh, but but who's, who's chasing you and who do you see as your uh, inspiration or you know, t your, your motivation to, to keep going as quickly as you are? So uh, I, I, prior to starting Peloton, I was the uh, president of Barnes & Noble and I just hired the CEO of Barnes & Noble, who is my boss, who's now the president of Peloton. And we... Um, Does that every, feel good to hire the guy who you used to work yeah, for? Yeah, he, uh, he and I were peer partners. I mean, he's fantastic, but um, he and I are good, good partners. But uh, we studied and we woke up anxious about Amazon like a lot of companies did. Barnes & Noble was obvious. Amazon was destroying Barnes & Noble. Amazon is not destroying Peloton yet. They're not in fitness. But the black swan situation for Peloton is that Amazon decides to come into fitness with a very inexpensive fitness platform and just lean on and not make any money and bundle the content into their prime membership and that would be the black swan for me so we are to your point andrew as aggressive as possible anticipating that the biggest and best run company in the world is going to come and try to destroy us so we wake up with a fire in our belly every day of the year or you could be the next whole
you guys. Um, that too, I hope. Uh, Jason Ackerman's a good friend of mine. He runs Fresh Direct, uh, um, so he's a little nervous about that, but um, yeah. Well, listen, great having you. Really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, come back and uh, chat with us again. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Awesome.